What's good, yo? It's your boy Spiritual Neasy, back with another video, brought to you by the Holy Spirit, man. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk about seven biblical reasons why sexual immorality or lust is demonic, right? Seven reasons why sexual impurity is one of the biggest tools, if not the biggest tool, that the devil uses to get people to become a slave to their sin, which is ultimately becoming a slave to the devil himself, right? And this is how he captures so many souls and destroys the lives of so many people in today's world. Remember, lust is one of the seven deadly sins against God. This is one of the most detestable things you can do against our Lord God, okay? So getting straight into it, the number one way that sexual morality is demonic is you are idolizing intercourse, okay? Guys, when you're having sex before marriage or not within marriage, you are literally worshiping the other person's body. You are actually, think of it as like a demonic ritual. You are performing a demonic ritual when you are committing this sin against your body and the other person's body and against God, right? And so a lot of people, they don't know that, you know, an idol is not just a statue, right? Like we read a lot in the Old Testament. Now that can be an idol, right? Buddha, Krishna, but also you can idolize things like drugs, alcohol, sex, um, you know, other celebrities, other humans, anything that, you know, you put above God, anything that you go to before God, whenever you're not feeling good and you're looking for happiness, anything that you're searching for happiness within more or before God, that is what you are idolizing. And that is the God of your life, right? A lot of people's God is money. A lot of people idolize money, right? And see, Guys, the first commandment that Jesus, that God said was, you shall have not have no other idols before him, right? So like this is one of the most dangerous things you can do is make sex an idol before God, premarital sex. That's two deadly sins in one, right? So in Jeremiah chapter two, verse 23 to 24, it's talking about how uh, Jerusalem was actually cheating on God and idolizing and worshiping other gods before him. And this is their response. That's not true. I haven't worshipped the images of Baal. But how can you say that? The Lord said, go and look in any valley in the land. Face the awful sins you have done. You are like a restless female camel desperately searching for a mate. You are like a wild donkey sniffing the wind at mating time. Who can restrain her lust? All right. So even God talks about the people of Israel you know, making lust their idol, right? And guys, that's something you really don't want to do because it's just going to drift you further and further away from God, okay? So the second way that this is demonic is it is degrading, right? So you are degrading your body anytime that you lay in bed with someone that you're not married to. And a lot of people, you know, they, they, they set their mind to have sex with somebody and they do it and they think that they won. They think that they're winning now. But no, you're not winning. The devil is winning every time that you lay down with someone you're not married to because you just went against God. You just hurt God's feelings and just made the devil rejoice every time that you be sexually immoral, every time that you fall into the lies of the devil, that you should just go fulfill your pleasure, that you should just go gratify yourself, that you should just go get your rocks off just because that's what your flesh wants to do. See, the devil wants you to follow after your flesh. So when you pursue somebody for sex because of your evil fleshly desires, you are doing what the devil wants you to do, okay? And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So when you lay down with someone else you're not married to, you are sinning against your own body. You're defiling your own body and the other person's body that you're worshiping, that you're having sex with, okay? Remember, sex was created by God for marriage only, right? Like I remember when I was like younger and I heard a, a girl say that she was waiting until uh, marriage to have sex. I used to look at her like she was like lame or weird or like she was lying. But that's exactly what the devil wants you to look at those people like. Like little did I know those women were actually doing what God wants them to do. So don't fall under the lie that that's like too crazy or lame to wait till marriage to have sex. No, that's what the devil wants you to think. God intended sex to only be for marriage, right? Remember, like we live in a world full of lies. So anytime that you, somebody tries to do something that's you know, what God wants to do, you're going to be looked at as crazy. You're going to be deemed weird. 
But that's, that, that's because the devil has, has deceived this whole world, right? So, uh, and that's what it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, that, you know, marriage is, uh, sex is for marriage and let not the marriage bed be defiled, right? So sex within marriage is not evil. Sex without marriage is evil, right? So the third way that sexual immorality is demonic is it makes you just a number, right? So guys, indulging in sexual immorality without repentance, it's going to strip you away. It's going to strip you of your God-given purpose, and it's going to drift you away from God. It's going to literally make you just a number. You're going to lose your purpose. You're going to lose the reason that God put you on this earth when you make sex your God, and you're so you know, infatuated with that sexual immorality, right? And here's biblical evidence of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8 says, uh, Paul writes, we must not take part in sexual sins as some of them did. In one day, 23,000 of them died because of their sin, right? So peep how it always, you know, groups these sexual sinners into numbers. Like we don't know these people's names. We don't know what they did besides commit this great sin against God. Like they literally turned into a number on this scripture, right? Nobody knows their name. And also, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, another example of this, it says, And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment, so God protected Noah. And when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood, God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. So peep how it said, destroyed the world of ungodly people. It didn't name those people. No, we don't know any of their names. We don't know anybody's name that died in the flood. We don't know none of them. It's because they were a slave to their sin. So they were, they were not important enough to even be named in the Bible. So they were literally just a number. Do you see how this works? Like, you are literally turning yourself into a statistic, into a number when you do the will of Satan. And then, but, but if you were to follow your God-given purpose, if you were to, you know, deny the flesh and follow after God, God is not going to let you just be a number. He's going to lead you and guide you to fulfill your purpose in Christ so that you can actually make an impact on this world, right? See, in life, you have two choices. You can either do your will and, be, and die just a number, or you can do the will of God and, be, and make an impact on this world and actually be somebody and actually, you know, leave a legacy behind for others, right? So the choice is yours, okay? The fourth way that lust is demonic is it's self-gratification, right? So it's all about, you know, feeding your evil pleasures. It's all about using people. It's selfish, right? When you're, you know, indulging in lust, sexual immorality, you are literally objectifying somebody else. You are degrading you know, somebody else. You're looking at them as an object and not the way, not the human, the beautiful creation that God created them to be, right? You're not looking at them like uh, they're fearfully and wonderfully, beautifully created like God said every human is. You're not looking at them like that. You're not looking at them through the lenses of God, through the lenses that God would want you to look at them through. You're looking at them through the lenses of the devil. You're looking at them through the way that the devil wants you to look at people, like an object, like a sex object that you could just use for yourself and your selfish gain, okay? Um, so in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, so I say, walk by the spirit so you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, why does Paul say this? It's because when we gratify the desires of the flesh, this is going to lead to death, spiritual death and death in the end, separation from God. But see, when we walk by the Spirit, this is going to lead to life. This is going to lead to our, us fulfilling our purpose. This is going to lead to, you know, the desires of our heart and also living with God in the afterlife in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So the fifth way that immorality is demonic is it is the matrix agenda, right? This is one of the biggest agendas that's pushed in the world, demonic agendas, right? all the billboards, all the ads. You can't even get on Instagram or any social media app without seeing something lustful, right? Isn't that crazy? See, the devil does this on purpose. And why do you think Cornhub is free? Why do you think you have so much easy, quick access to you know, sexual immorality and adultery online? It's because the devil wants you to, like he wants you to indulge in it. He wants you to you know, exchange your soul for that quick dopamine hit. Because that's what's happening when, you, you know, when you're masturbating, right? 
You're, you're exchanging your soul for that quick five minute, 10 minute pleasure, man. It's just not worth it, bro. It's not worth giving up your purpose for that quick fix, okay? Because I'm telling you, you can't do both at the same time, bro. Don't let the devil make you think that, you know, you can do the will of God and you can fulfill your purpose and, and get that quick fix, get that quick dopamine hit that's defiling yourself. Don't let the devil fool you, man. That's a lie from the pit of hell, okay? Uh, so in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who was called the devil or Satan, he who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. Right. So it, this is biblical proof that the devil, he is, you know, the mass influence on this world. And he is it says he literally deceives and seduces the entire world. He entices, he tempts the entire world to, you know, fulfill their fleshly desires, which is not the desires that God wants us to fulfill. OK, so the sixth way that lust is demonic is it makes you feel ashamed or guilty, right? Sometimes, you know, sexual immorality, it can literally turn into a humiliation ritual, right? People will be desperate. People will do a lot of desperate things. You know, people will go against their own morals. People will literally change who they are just to get in somebody's draws, just to lay down with somebody. They'll literally change who they are. Like, bro, like you are literally selling yourself out for that quick sex, for that quick dopamine. And that's why, you know, when you finish most of the time, especially, you know, after you masturbate, trust me, I have felt that feeling before. You literally feel worthless. You feel like you just drained yourself. You, you feel spiritual death. You know, you feel ashamed, guilty of yourself, guilty of your actions. You know, that's exactly what it feels like. You know, every time that you, you know, that's why post nut clarity is, you know, uh, a popular phrase is because, you know, after you get that nut off, you, you start to come to your real senses. You start to, you know, return back to your natural state, right? And you start to get convicted by that Holy Spirit to let you know that what you just did was not right. But see, that the, we are so blessed that God has given us the gift of repentance. It's a blessing to be able to repent. Think about how many people died from lust that didn't get to repent. So if you're still alive, you still have the opportunity to repent. Don't waste that opportunity, man. Go to God now. Let Jesus free you from the chains of lust now, right? Today is the day of your salvation, right? So, uh, and also in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, we see that it says, being right with God makes a nation great, but sin is a shame to any people, right? So sexual sin is a shame, and that's why you feel ashamed afterwards most of the time, right? So the seventh way that lust is demonic is you are doing the will of Satan, right? You are literally doing what the devil wants you to do. You are participating in one of the biggest agendas that the devil has created and put on this earth and cursed humanity with, right? And we know that this is the will of the devil because it's literally the opposite of the will of God. The will of God says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, right? So the pagans, the people that don't know God, as Paul describes, are the people that indulge in their lust, right? So if God's will is for you to abstain from lust, then that means the devil's will is for you to participate in lust. So anytime you get tempted, remember that it is your decision in that moment if you're going to do the will of God or the will of the devil, okay? So if you made it this far in the video, comment down below, Jesus saves. Okay. To wrap up the video, seven biblical ways that sexual immorality is demonic. Number one is you're idolizing intercourse. Number two is it's degrading. Number three is it makes you just a number. Number four is a self-gratification. Number five is it's the matrix agenda. Number six, it makes you feel ashamed or guilty. And number seven is you are doing the will of Satan, right? So guys, just be careful every time that you get tempted. 
Remember, God is not going to allow you to be tempted more than you can bear. Just run to Jesus. Jesus can save you. He can free you from the chains. He can make you free. You know, he can give you that freedom from the devil, right? He could, he could remove that dominion that the devil might have on you. He could break down any demonic stronghold, okay? The Bible says, with man, it might be impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible, okay? So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Also, if you're feeling led to donate, I do have my links down below in the description. Anything and everything is greatly appreciated. I love you guys so much. Until next time, it's been your boy Neezy. I'm out, bro. Peace.